Yes, everybody, welcome back to the Irish Hotspur. In this video, we're going to be talking about James Madison and is he losing his faith in Ange Postacoglu? Is Ange Postacoglu losing his faith in him? Is there a little bit of a, you know, kind of a, a, a rupture? Is there a little bit of a, a ripple between them? Is there maybe a disagreement going on here? Because it feels like Ange Postacoglu just isn't taking to him right now, hadn't played him very much recently, and some of the most big games as well against Ipswich Town didn't start him you look as well against Aston Villa Man City barely even played at all if not didn't even play you look at James Madison right now it feels like there's something that's maybe gone on there maybe Ange Postacoglu isn't trusting him for some of the bigger games it could be something that might have happened behind the scenes that's what we're going to be talking about just some pure speculation and also maybe some conversation around whether it's even justified or not because me personally I don't even think James Madison's really been that poor or anything this season I think he's actually been a lot better than what he was maybe towards the tail end of last mm -hmm. season after recovering from his injury so let us know everybody in the comments below smash the like button but Dave is Ange Postacoglu not having James Madison right now are we reading too much into this are we just making something out of nothing or is there something to be said that you know he hasn't played him very much in the last three or four games well look it hasn't just been this season jack let's outline it you know last season he was very happy to pull him off you know off the football pitch usually clubs don't do that to their best players also towards the end of the season he was on the bench for posta coglu you know then this season he starts off in the lineup Things get tough. Posta Coglu takes him out, put in, puts in Papa Matasar. You know, he missed the Man City game, the Cup game, which was our biggest game of the season, followed by the Aston Villa came off the bench for, what, two minutes near the end? And again, against Ipswich comes off for, what, on the, on the 89th minute when we, were when, when we were trying to chase a goal and we were absolutely piss poor all game, especially in that midfield. He could have come on a lot earlier for someone like Kulazewski or Sarah that, and he didn't. So it's clear that something is not right there. We're not making this up, you know. You can see for yourself something's not right there i'm just trying to figure out is it personal with james madison or is it football related if it's personal you would say there's very little scope for james madison to come back if it's football related there's ever every opportunity for james madison to come back quite frank we just don't know for me I think Postacoglu doesn't trust him in a football sense. The minute things get tough on the football pitch, Postacoglu is very quick to whip him off or drop him or take him out of the starting lineup and replace him. When you go into this season, Madison is performing a lot better than what he was last season. Going forward, if you take his contributions in terms of towards goals, which is, you know, what he's in the team to do, he scored three goals and uh, three goals. Yeah. yeah, three goals and four assists across all competitions. Dejan Kulazewski has two goals and five assists across all competitions. And Papa Matasar has three goals and two assists across all competitions. The problem is, is that Kulazewski is involved in a lot of Tottenham's good play, setting up other people, and sometimes is even the guy with the pre-assist to the assist. But he will work his nuts backwards. He intercepts playing midfield, and he can get stuck in. Same with Papa Matasar, he's contributing similar numbers going forward, but we've all seen the defensive side of the game that he brings. And when the going gets tough, we've seen at Brighton, we all seen that second goal. It wasn't just him that threw in a lazy foot. It, there was the team of Werner there as well and Destiny Adoji. But it highlights that when the game gets tough and going that way, Madison doesn't want it. It's not his game. So when we're going through inconsistent spells, Madison is going to be the one to be dropped out of that midfield unless he brings that side to the game because Posta Coglu simply can't trust him when the game gets tough. So that's that. Um, that's where I'm at with it, quite mm. frank, Jack. And I do think that is something that Madison yeah. has to bring to his games. You look at someone like Papa Matasar, the biggest criticism was he's great at turning over ball, all the industrious work, but he doesn't contribute going forward. All of a sudden, you look at it, he's affecting games, he's contributing going forward. So he's propelled himself in there ahead of Madison. Mm. And that's, I think, is Madison's biggest problem at Tottenham Jack right now. Can I ask this, though? If it is, let's say, personal, where it's actually outside of what he's doing on the football pitch, and I think Andrew Postacoglu has every right to feel like, you know, he's got a bench and maybe it's something that he feels like he's noticed, you know, he's showing up late to training or doing something outside of, you know, the the grounds that he's not approving of, whatever it might be, right? If that's the case, and I think it's within Ange's right to make a decision there. If yeah. it is maybe based off his actual performances on the pitch, could you make the argument that Ange is being a tad bit harsh here by, by dropping him? Because I think we did have that good period where Kulisevsky and Madison playing off of each other was really tearing some teams apart and looked like a really good combination. It's not like he needed to do that 
every single game. There were probably better games to go for Saar than it was to go for Madison and Kulusevsky together. But just like kind of like out of nothing, he's all of a sudden just basically dropped him back into the to the bench and pretty much, you know, played anybody else really in the last few games other than Madison. It feels like he's really all of a sudden just lost his spot in the pecking order, especially in any sort of hope of getting a spot in the starting lineup. Yeah. So is Ants just being a bit harsh then if it's purely off of footballing performances? I, I agree with your argument. It doesn't necessarily work as hard as what Saar does or Kulisevsky does, but he does bring that sort of, you love it, Dave, that Maverick-like creativity, you know, in the team that, you know, a guy that, only Madison can really have or, or can bring. And he's, he's special in that regard. And so I feel like he's shown that on more than one occasion this season. I think he could still be better, but I don't think he's been really that poor at all. So is Ange Postacoglu being a tad harsh? If you were starving, Jack, and I offered you a Yorkie or a Yorkie Duo, what one are you going to take? <laughs> I'm going to be embarrassed. I don't even know what either of those are. So it's a chocolate bar, right? You can either have a single chocolate bar or you can have the double. But, but, but bear in mind, you're starving. You're going to take the double, right? Fill yourself up. So, you know, that sort of answers that question. If you've got a player that's doing both sides of the game, why wouldn't you play them over someone that only offers you one side of the game, that only offers you 50%? Where I do think it's harsh on James Madison is the likes of Aston Villa when we're cruising, get him on the pitch, try and play him into that, into more yeah. confidence, you know, against the likes of Ipswich when you're chasing a goal. It's clear, things clearly aren't right after 55, 60 minutes. The game get him on the him. pitch. You know what? That's where I do think it's harsh. But at the end of the day, no one knows how long Postacoglu has been onto Madison to try and bring this uh, yeah. side of the game to him. No one knows how long Postacoglu has been onto Madison, highlighting it to him. Look, I need you to do this. And if Madison simply just doesn't want to do it, at what point does the manager take a stand? Because if he continues to pick James Madison, all of a sudden, everything he's asking everyone else to do, they'll start slacking off because they're looking at it and go, well, I don't have to put in, if he's still playing every week, I don't have to put in half as much effort. And all of a sudden, it absolutely crumbles and you it's like the wild, wild west, the dress rooms in years gone by, everyone's doing what they're doing. For me, when I was growing up, Jack, and I don't think it should change and I don't think it has changed, it's up to you to do everything to prove to the manager to, to, that you deserve to be picked ahead of someone else. If Very rare, because I was absolutely Pele, but... Um, you know, if, if for instance, for if I wasn't ever picked, like when I was making a step up at 15, 16 years of age from underage football straight into the senior team, Jack, um, you know, for the first few games I spent on the bench, I watched people in my position. I was like, okay, he does that. Maybe the manager likes that. I'm going to implement that to my game. And once I've done that, I've become a much more well-rounded player, which to the point where the manager can't pick me. So that's where I'm at with it. The manager's right. James Madison has to do more. I but Postacoglu also has to give him the opportunity to put it right. I, I can agree with that. I just feel like there was that really good combination play between Kulusevsky and Madison. Felt like Ange Postacoglu found a solution to some of the midfield troubles. Like I joked before saying, oh, he can go even more attacking. That's kind of the, the Ange solution to things. But he has mm -hmm. kind of regressed a little bit back towards going maybe with a more conservative, you know, kind of box to box type presence with Saar, who is also providing goals and assists, like you say. But I did like that combination of uh, Kulusevsky and Madison. I thought that was some of the best play that we've seen from yeah, Spurs nice. in a long time. Really, really beautiful stuff. But um, with James Madison not even being included in the England team, I feel really bad for him because now he's got two weeks, you know, pretty much stuck with Ange. So we'll see if he can actually work his way back into the team now that he's got some extra time on the mm. training ground with him. Or if this, uh, if there is one, this little kind of uh, disagreement, this uh, this kind of rift between the two of them, maybe it gets uh, even more exaggerated, even more uh, troublesome for for the two of them now that they'll be stuck with each other and they don't get any time off. But we'll look forward to it. I really Just, want James Madison to make that comeback though, because I really mm -hmm. liked that combination between him and Kulusevsky. But I'd agree with you that Kulusevsky right now is still my preferred number ten. If you were to pick between the two and you could only have one. I would take Kulusevsky any day of the week right now. But James Madison, I just, I'm surprised this has happened. I am surprised. Mm. Do you know what? Two things on James Madison, just quickly, Jack. James Madison has an ego, which can be your best friend at times and make you, but it can also break you. You know, when, when you're at the top, sometimes your ego is what can sort of break you sometimes. You get too carried away. But when things aren't going well, that's where you need that ego to come out. And it might actually serve James Madison well in the long run to come out of this spell. But also, I do think there needs to be another conversation around James Madison that, look, I haven't really heard anyone else have that conversation. Maybe they have. But we also have to take into account, he came out of a dress room that was losing every single week and ended up getting relegated. As a player, that takes a lot of 
psychologically out of you. Like with Ireland, for instance, right now, we've got a huge problem, right? We've got players that are playing in the bottom of the Premier League, you know, don't win anything. They're used to losing every week. And then all of a sudden, we're asking them to turn up into international duty and ask a bunch of people that are used to losing to all of a sudden turn around and start winning. It doesn't just happen like that. So with James Madison, you know, coming out of that environment, I do think that maybe... You know, coming into this Tottenham environment, we're not winning every week and it's sort of continuing, you know, that we're, we're dropping points and stuff. And when you look at someone like James Madison, it's been a perpetual cycle of that. Sometimes you can get sucked into that and it's hard to drag yourself out of that. Very, very good point. Let us know, everybody, whether we kind of making this up on Madison, you know, maybe there isn't much of a rift between him and Ange at all. If you do think there is one, let us know why. Let, let us know if you think it's harsh. All that good stuff down in the comments below. Please smash that like button on the way out and also consider becoming a member of the channel if you want to support us a bit further. But we'll see you next time. Come on, you Spurs. Big Andrew, we never stop.